Hello again everyone and welcome back to Mobile Adventures. In today's episode, we cover this thing. Some days you get to pick your projects. Some days your project picks you. Well, today this thing picked me. I don't know if any of you recognize this, but today we had a nice little red light, which indicates that the sump pump has filled up beyond the safety area and set the alarm off. That is because the pump appears to have gone bad. The good news is this is something that was on our radar. In fact, to give you a little bit of the backstory on this, when we bought the place that we're in now, one of the things that, one of the reasons we got it for the price we did is that this basement previously flooded. From the bits and pieces of the story that we put together, it is because of this pump right here. It went bad previously, basement flooded, the elderly lady who lived here didn't know how to take care of it, and thus an insurance claim was filed to get everything cleaned back up. Uh, so, it's been on my radar because I had it, it's gone bad once and I knew it was probably going to go bad again just because they do go bad. I believe this was replaced, give or take, somewhere around 2015. In fact, there was actually a label on here, yeah, 9-2015. So, it is now four years old and it has gone bad again. It's locked up. Basically, I walked down here after the alarm went off and it was just sitting there making a noise locked up. So, we have been thinking about actually replacing all of this anyway. So for now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and tear everything out and see exactly what condition everything is in and then make the decision. Do we go ahead and rip this out and get rid of this bathroom now or do we go ahead and get everything back functional? Uh, we, there's only two of us here in the house. We have two bathrooms upstairs. We don't actually need a basement bathroom. So the space may be more valuable to us anyway. And the, more than likely, we're gonna go ahead and just rip this out. But first, I need to see what we're up against. One of the reasons this project has been one that has been pushed back and back and back is because with a basement sump pump, you basically have a reservoir in, under the concrete with a pump and pipe coming out. The one that was here has four bolts holding it all together. The bottoms of the bolts are down to the concrete. You can't get to them the way that this one was put in. And they pretty much were all rusted shut. So getting this apart was not going to be fun. And until I can basically tear it apart, we're not gonna really know what we're up against. So we're gonna go ahead and start tearing into this and see what we're up against and then make a decision about which way we're gonna go. Welcome back, stay tuned. camera we had the discussion this puppy's going bye bye so we're gonna go ahead and cut this pipe out get rid of the bathroom that's down here I went digging through my big spare 
bucket of parts and if you work on a place like this you're gonna have one of those big buckets of spare plumbing parts so I went through that spare parts box do not have a two inch PVC end cap so that pretty much that means time to go to Lowe's so now we have the PVC cap that we need to hit that project so let's move into that one problem with going to Lowe's especially without the wife is that other things happen to fall in the cart like possibly four new wheels to put on the lathe. They're $19.99 a piece for the fancy things that come for it at the local store. These were like five bucks a piece, six bucks a piece. So I think these will work. We'll see. And I've been needing to pick up a blade level for the for the uh, saws, the table saw. And uh, one of those happened to fall in the cart too. Oh yeah. We'll go ahead and pre-apologize for any loud noises. No one's murdering anyone. The wife's just watching Carolina basketball. Okay, so basically PVC pipe, the purple stuff is a primer to kind of clean things up, get it ready to really take the glue. Then the PVC cement, both pieces, stick it on and twist. The twist helps really get everything in there. Um, as soon as you can't turn it anymore, it's pretty much dry enough. To, at this point, we should be good and watertight. The plumbing on this place has always been mediocre at best and some of that is even from an actual plumbing company in this case this is basically flat to maybe even angled down so even though i've got it capped off we don't want anything building up in here so now i'll loosen these clamps and twist this up a little bit just to get it up um, until we can get around to just replacing it all together In case you're wondering, the different color pipes and the reason for these clamps here. <clears throat> so normally with a new construction, everything nowadays is plain PVC pipe and all of this stuff just kind of glues together and you're good to go. In the olden days, what they used for uh, DWV, drain waste vent, these are non-pressurized pipes, with this black pipe. And you, there are some glues that can kind of glue these together, but officially you're not supposed to really glue them together. These clamps are basically just compression clamps. It's nothing more than a rubber gasket. The two pipes are stuck into there and the clamps clamp it down so it doesn't leak. Basic, straightforward and it works good enough. Don't really, don't really love them, but 
They actually are easy to get apart. You don't have to worry about cutting pipe. So there are a lot of advantages. Speaking of the plumbing in this place is a joke. This pipe was not even glued. They just stuck the two together and basically caulked it. The piece, the black piece you see here on the end is actually a air ingress that allows air to get into the system to keep a vacuum from forming on your plumbing. Technically, in this configuration, those should never be used, but to our knowledge, that was actually installed, again, by a plumbing company that is local to this area that we have been told by multiple people to never hire. can get the pipe off of the lid which as you can see was completely just rusted to pieces just all the paint has rusted off it's in very poor condition the plastic liner that is actually the tank is in equally poor condition you can tell how deep the sump pump area the, the plastic casing of your pump is by the uh, death of this pump. wires are the alarm this is what actually sets it off basically there is a uh, there's two of these float valves inside the sump pump the first one and the way they work is liquids come up and they start to float when they float to a certain height a contactor slides over makes contact and turns the pump on so the way it normally works is gets to a certain level, pump turns off, fluids get to a certain height, pump cuts on, back and forth. There's an additional float valve higher up, which is, for lack of a better word, your oh crap float, which means that, hey, your other one's not working and the fluids have gotten even higher than they're supposed to and the alarm kicks on. So when that one makes contact, that's when it actually trips this to alert you that your pump's failed. At this point, everything is off, and like I said, we're not putting this back in. It's not going to be a sewage sump pump when we're done. We may wind up converting this from a sewage sump to a standard foundation sump. We actually have another one on the other end of the house that is the primary. This one, technically a sewage sump pump and your crawl space basement foundation should never be connected. They're completely separate systems. But as I said before, when it rains heavily, you can hear water seeping into the system and it shouldn't. So we know this thing was not exactly built correctly from the very beginning. So who knows what I'm going to find. It's still filled with groundwater right now. 
So basically the next step is going to be getting all the water out. Okay. The water's all clear. There's nothing actually in the tank. So at least it's not going to be as bad as I thought it might be as far as cleaning it up. Give you an idea of what everything looks like. Okay. I say it's clear. You can see all the way down. There is your one drain pipe that comes from the system. So it's a fairly short system. That white pipe right there is your actual sewage drain pipe. And the only thing that is connected to it is this sink and that toilet. Like I said, we've actually never used them. They're still here, but we've never used them. And at this point, we've decided that we're going to go ahead and just get rid of them all together. So we'll need to tear up the concrete foundation to get that pipe out. But that doesn't have to happen immediately. That can happen later on. So for now, we are going to concentrate on getting the water out of this and figuring out what we're going to do here. I do kind of like the idea of having an actual sump pump here to get water out from under the foundation. And maybe we will pull this one out and put in the standard size that you would use for that. Basically, this is an actual waterproof barrel, for lack of a better word. And the kind that you would use for your foundation is perforated so that it has holes for the water from the ground to leach into it. So we'll see what's going to happen. Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and cut this episode here. So just to give you a recap, this house has a basement bathroom, basically a half bath. It was a toilet and a sink going into a sump pump system. And the way the sump pump system works is it's basically a in the ground concrete, under the concrete tank with a pump and basically it pumps from there up into your system. We didn't need the bathroom. We decided that we we're going to get rid of it. And when that pump locked up, figured this is as good of a time as any. As I said before, sometimes the project picks you, and today this project picked me. So we've got the sump pump tank opened up. We got the bolts cut off. We got the pump pulled up, got everything disassembled. The pump looks like it's turning, so I'm not really sure exactly what locked up or what broke. So not really sure what happened there. But at this point, we've got all that out. So in the next episode, we will work on getting the water out of the tank, getting the tank removed, and see what's under there and what we're going to be up against next. We'll also work on getting the sink removed and the toilet and get those plumbing lines chopped off and disconnected.